give God some praise in this place for today. selection coming from our choir. lesson will be coming from Genesis chapter 6, verse 6 through 8, verses 13 through 14, and verse 22. Again, that's Genesis chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, 13 and 14, and 22. It reads, And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 13, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Verse 22 reads, thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Amen. May God continue to add a blessing to his red word. Our morning prayer, I'm going to ask Deacon Akins if he will lead us in prayer this morning. such a God that you are, we ask, Lord, that you forgive us of our sins yes, Jesus. and create within us a clean heart. Amen. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see another day, yes. to hear your red word again. Yes. And Lord, we pray that it not go in vain, Amen. that we give thanks for everything. Lord, that you are just, merciful, and a forgiving God. 
a God that made everything, a God that knows everything, and God that sees everything. So Lord, through all of your goodness and your grace and your mercy that come from you, that you shared it with us yes, through your son Jesus. Oh, you gave Lord. his life that we might have life. Oh, so Lord, we thank you for giving your son on our behalf. And Lord, as we mingle and co-mingle with men and women, that we show the love of God in our lives. Lord, we need to walk upright, speak upright, and live upright each day of our lives. And Lord, if we come short of anything, we ask for you to forgive us of our sins. And Lord, I pray that we will grow in grace in such a way that we can love you more and more each day. Bless the service today that will be what you would have it to be. Bless the speaker, Lord. It's going to bring God's word to we that we pray that it does not go out for Because each and every one of us needs the word of God in our lives so that we can share it one with another. Amen. So, Lord, as you, what you have given the speakers, you give to us. We pray that when we leave out of these walls, that it will be a blessing to you and a blessing to we likewise. Lord, we thank you for everything. This morning, Lord, for our walk with you, I will talk with you. Lord, when we pray that we doubt nothing, that we humble ourselves and have faith to wait on you and let your will be done upon your people. Remember preachers and pastors everywhere. People and mothers likewise. All of your ministers and all of God's peace. Remember, dear God, whatever situation they're in this morning, we call on you, dear God. Lord, have mercy upon them. Bless our leaders, dear Lord. We need you this morning, dear Lord. Oh, God, without you we can't make it. Oh, God, have mercy. Have mercy this morning. Oh, God, when done with this earth, we no longer will be able to assemble in places like this anymore. We pray to be well with our souls. These blessings and all of you ask in your name for Christ's sake. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Today. Do you thank him just for waking you up this morning? Yeah. 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 He didn't have to do it. Yeah. Amen. But aren't you so glad that he did? Yeah. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our affirmation of faith. We're going to ask you to stand as we affirm what we believe.
on this service this morning. We ask God that you have your way. Yes. God that you will be the sole person this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. We just want to say thank you. We thank God for our scripture this morning, which we covered from Genesis 6 and 6 to 8, and 13 and 14 and 22. A very familiar scripture of a very familiar person who I should talk about this morning. Yes. Who everybody should have known when he first picked up your bird. And God went on and created the heaven and he created the earth and he made everything. And that was, he said that was good, and it was very good. Yeah. And God, this morning, give us a man, and we're going to talk about him once again. Yes. Just in case you forgot about this man. And this man is by the name of Noah, first of all. We thank God for him. My topic this morning, to you, as well as to myself, to how to build your boat in the midst of a drought. <laughs> How to build it in a midst of a drought. We thank God for those words. Today I'm going to talk about two droughts because we are in a drought. All right. We're going to talk about the drought that Noah and his family was in. And we're also going to talk about that spiritual drought. <laughs> that drought sometime when we get drought into that spirit. Yeah. And we don't know how to come out of it. But God is able to bring us out. Yeah. And today, we're going to talk about, as I put down, two kinds of drops. I first thought about one, and then some spirit, the Spirit told me to tell you all about your spiritual drop also. Because <laughs> sometimes we are in a drop. Sometimes we don't know which way to go, what to do, how to do it. But before we get started, I want to give you a brief summary of the story of the Lord. For anyone who may not be, may not be familiar with it, or may not, or have forgot some of the important parts of the Lord and who he was. When I look at this scripture, praise the Lord, I kind of got kind of excited about it. I said, Lord, we all are in the world. And this land that God had built it became a dry place too. No rain, no water. And then I was wondering how long did it take to rain? Because when I went back into the book of Genesis, I saw how God had created the heavens and the earth, yes. the day and the night, and how he made everything green, beautiful, the animals. And then he created man, but he did not say brain. So once I began to study, I found out there were four fountains that was in that garden. And those fountains produced the water. It kept everything green. It kept everything beautiful. And it kept everything growing. Then I found out that God had put two people in the midst of that garden to take care of. He said, I will make everything. I made a partner for the animals. I made a partner for everything that was in the sea. And then he made Adam. The word said he 
put an end to a deep sleep. And once he went into the sleep, he realized that he did not make it help me forever. Mm -hmm. So the word says that he put him in a sleep, took out a rib, and when he looked at her, he called her Eve. And that was our first mother of the earth, and our first father, Adam and Eve. And they didn't have to do nothing. It's like we don't do nothing sometimes. <laughs> they didn't have to do nothing. All they had to do was go in. But they had one thing God told them. In the midst of the garden, there is a tree that they should not mess with. So as I kept reading, and the word said that along came Eve, they didn't have to do nothing. And then there was a serpent that talked to her. Sometimes we listen to people we shouldn't listen to. God had already told them, if you touch, you become one. And that's what the Salem, the serpent told her. He said, did he tell you that? You'll be like a God. You will know everything. You will know right from wrong. Today, we should know right from wrong. Because he kept talking to her, he kept talking. She kept listening. And that's what we do sometimes. We keep listening to people. They keep telling us what we should do, how we should do how we should act, which way we should go. And she just kept listening. And all of a sudden, disobedient, they came into that mess. And God put them out. But about some years ago, down the line, after all of this had happened, they had children. And the children, I guess, we had children too. And things begin to happen, they become to be disobedient. And then God looked at what he had already made, and, and he was disappointed in what we do. Don't you know God get disappointed in what we do now? Yeah. The same yeah. way as he did back then. Yeah. The word said that he talked to Noah. He said, I think it regrets me that I had made man. And that he was getting ready to destroy the earth. And when I began to look at it, he's not talking about the whole earth. He was talking about, he was not talking about half of the earth. He was talking about the whole earth. He said, I'm going to destroy what I made. But the word said when God thought about it, he looked at Noah, a man who had lived long ago. And Noah was a, a godly man. He was a family man. He was a bold man. And he was an obedient man. And once God told him what he was getting ready to do, and then the word said he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. And that's what we want to find. Yes. We want to find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. And God talked to him and told him what he wanted to do. By him being an obedient man, mm -hmm. he didn't ask questions. He didn't say why, when. Mm -hmm. But God told him exactly what he needed to do. The word said he wasn't like we were. It may take us a day or two. Mm -hmm. It may take us a while to do what God tells us to do. But the word said he got busy. He said he had three sons. And, and God had told him how to make his all. Now it was dry land now. No rain falling. But God told him exactly what he needed to do. And God didn't make it half make it. He made it good. Everything he touched. He made it good and very good. He told him how he wanted it made. He told him, I want you to make it out of goat wood. 
and he did exactly what God told him to do. He said, I want to make it three feet high. You know how sometimes when we build our houses, some like to live low mm -hmm. so they can just walk on in. Some like to build more than one story in their house. Some people like to build upstairs and downstairs. But this one was supposed to be with three rooms in it. And he did exactly what God told him to do. Because God said he was going to destroy the earth by water. But in this family, it was only one wife, three sons, and three daughter-in-laws, which make eight people. Use your imagination. Eight people. And all these people in this world, and it was going to be only eight people that God was going to save. The Lord did not build an ark. He told him to build it out of gopher wood, instruct him what to do and when to do it. He told him how to make it. You know, when we build houses, we tell our person that's going to build our house exactly how we want it. If we don't like the way you build it, we tell them we don't like how to build it and how to make it. But Noah didn't ask any questions. He told him to pitch it in and pitch it out. All right. And then when I was thinking about it, mm, this was a good boat. This was a boat that's going to stand what's to come. So Noah did as he was told. And he told him how to make it. He told him that it had to be 300 cubic feet. The breadth of it was 50 feet. And the height of it was 30 feet. He told them to put a window in, a window. We got a lot of windows in this building. We got a lot of windows in our house. And then he told them how to build the door. There was only one door, a door for going in and going out. We have three doors that we can go out of here. We can go out through the front, we can go out through the left, or we can go out to the right. But in this hour, they were going out one door. The word said that he built it as God made his specification. And after he made the specification, he told them when the time come, he said, I need for you to go get the animals, to bring them in. I don't want to name them all today. But what you see here now is what he brought in. The words say two by two. He brought them in. Me, I tell you, he had to be obedient to God. He brought him to the snakes that we're afraid of, which I am afraid of too. He brought him to the dogs. He brought the cows in that we get our milk from. He brought everything that God told him to bring into that heart. Yes. And by him building it three feet high, everybody had their own living space. All right. He brought in the food that need to be fed to them and to his household. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, he built the ark as God specified. And then, as I remember reading too, that there was no drought. It began to rain. And as he began to build this ark, I can imagine people coming by and wondering why are you doing this? He said, it's going to rain. God said, it's going to rain. And people said, there's no way it's going to rain. There's no cloud in the sky. But the Lord said, but God told me that one day it's going to rain. Yes. So he kept doing what God told him to do. Yes. And then one of these on morning, mm -hmm. and one day, the word said it began to rain. Yes. When I looked in the book of Matthew, Matthew said the same thing happened back in that day and time. The same thing going to happen in this day and time. Mm -hmm. The word said that 
And as they were partying, get married. You know how the rain started dropping them, and they kept right on dropping. Mm. And the word said that they didn't think it was going to last for just one day. You know how we do sometimes when it rains three times in a row. We say, what's that word we used to use? We say, rain, rain, go away. <laughs> You have done a good job. Uh, Try and give it out our praise. 
about your build your own art. Yeah. Yeah.
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Rest from the battle of his now forevermore. We dismiss ourselves before our man.